You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Keith. Johnson. Yep. Yep. AfterBuzz TV. AfterBuzz TV. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Castle After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Castle After Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. After a month off the air, Castle is back and taking better a better, than, better, better than, than ever. ever. <laughs> Blast from the past. It's season six, episode 20, That 70s Show. I am Tiana Hobson, sadly filling in for Paige Sullivan, who moved back home to Boston. So we miss you, Paige. We miss you. But that's OK, because me and Kate gonna hold it down. That's right. Hi, guys. I'm Kate Aquilano. We got this, Paige. Don't worry. I know you're watching to make sure we don't mess up your show. But I mean, we might mess it up a little bit, but it's fine. <laughs> but that's fine. It's all good. So t- overall thoughts on tonight's episode, Kate? Um. I like when the B story of, of Castle and Beckett kind of moves along a little more. Um, it was a fun episode overall. I liked it. But um, when's the wedding happening? <laughs> That's my reaction. Uh, more wedding, blah, 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 which we'll get into. But it was good. It was It fine. was good. I, I thought it was fun, especially mm-hmm. after being away for a month. This was an episode where if you've never watched an episode of Castle before, you could come into this episode and, and be like, you know what? It. I like what this guy is about. Yeah, it was true castle. The whole, like, he jumped into it, like, full force. He was in 70s, head to toe. I and loved it. I loved it, too. I thought it was great. Okay, so let's talk about the episode. Yeah. So, of course, like every episode, it opens on a dead body. Dead body. Much. Um, in cement. In cement, which was kind of gross. It's it's yeah. not even a dead body at this point. It's a skeleton. It's a because skeleton. it's been, don't make me do the math, but a lot of years yeah. um, since this guy was dead. Um we find out that they poured the concrete in 1978. So, I mean, this guy died back then. We know that he's in a powder blue suit and he has pinky rings. I love that, like, Castle sees all these little aspects. He's like, 1958, blue suit, looks like a disco suit. Da, 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 <laughs> da, 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 da. He is Vince Bianchi. <laughs> I'm like, how did you figure that out in 0.2 seconds? Exactly. But he's that good. He is that good. He's like, hey, guys, who who else? He's looking at them like, why don't you guys know why don't this you already? Know about the murder in 1978 that was never solved. Very high profile. He just disappeared and no one ever heard from him again. So we learned about Vince Bianchi, who was a head of a mob family. Yes. Um, in the 70s and was very good at his job, I guess. He was a very good being bad man. Yeah, being bad man. Um. And then we cut to Detective Boyle, who's there, helping with the case. He, I'm assuming he was an officer who worked the case back in the 70s, yep. who was kind of catching them up. I thought at some point he would have more to do with Yeah, it, it was kind of like he would pop up back in the episode later on. Yeah. But no, he was just basically filling him in, basically. This was the head of this family. This is the head of this family. They were rivals. They hated each other. They were going to merge. So it was all basically like an education in the 1970s mob families yeah, of New and, York. And what surprise? I don't know if the so it's not surprising about mob families, but there's so many mob families <laughs> that I thought that there was always just like one head of the mob. And apparently I was wrong about this. There are multiple families involved You never involved read The in... Five Families? The no. book that's like this thick? I'll let you borrow it. It's oh, really thanks. good. Because I definitely need to get caught up on my mob family hey, I knowledge. Own it. It's really good. Is it? Yeah, it's okay. really interesting. I'll have to read it because I I'll knew bring nothing. It in next week. I knew nothing about the mob watching this episode, but I learned a lot. Yes. I did learn a lot. Um, we learned that Frank Russo um, was the last person to see... Vince alive. They went to dinner. They went to dinner the at night before. Gino's, and um, they actually have a picture. It's the last known picture of Vince, but he's not wearing the blue suit in it. So they're like, did he go home and change? Where did he go after this that 
you know, now he's dead, covered in concrete. Yeah. So it's kind of like, it gives them a, a push to go talk to Frank. Yeah, and we also know that Frank ended up taking over for mm -hmm. the family for a while. Yep. It didn't last very long. They didn't really go into details why he was... He was not a good mob he boss. He was not a good mob boss, apparently. His wife's not happy that he wasn't His a good... His wife would make a really good mob boss. <laughs> yeah, she would. Basically. Basically, all the mob people in tonight's episode reminded me of the 80s. Just like, you know, with the big hair. And, yeah. Like, I mean, they never... They never quite left there. Yeah. I felt like I was watching... Um, oh, what's the movie... My cousin Vinny. Oh, very true. I've, I felt yeah. very much like I was watching and my cousin Vinny. And you get those Vinny. heavy accents. Yeah, the heavy, heavy, heavy accents. accents I loved everything. It was good. Um, but Frank, you know, he's like, no, after I after dinner, I took him home and dropped him off. Like, mm -hmm. that was the last time I saw him. Um, but Harold Leone mm -hmm. is, was his advisor and, like, basically Vince's number two. Exactly. So he would know more than anyone. If Vince, Vince went anywhere, Harold would know. Harold would know. So they go talk to Harold. And when they get to Harold, oh, my, is this not <laughs> Castle's fantasy of, loves like, so everyday much. life? Harold um, is suffering from pathological grieving. Which basically means that he's stuck in the 70s. He He's did, just never moved on. Never moved on from Vince's death. So he is not thinking outside the scope. So I, my question to that is, clearly he has been aging for the yeah, last 30 plus it years. I mean, let's be honest. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> okay. He has to go leave his house at some point. There is a woman that works for him that was like... Washing taking the car, care taking care of him. Maybe she gets the groceries. But he basically stays in his house that's still, like, in 70s dec decor, mm -hmm. watching, like, a 70s TV show oh, on, like, this, like, huge yeah, box he was watching TV. Archie Bunker. Yes, he was. Yeah. And uh, But I don't know how he... I mean, you just look out your window and you know it's not 1978. Yeah, you see, you know, the cars going by. You see kids on the street playing. Well, I guess kids don't play on the streets anymore I mean, because of true. video games. So that's, very that's true. another sign. You know, where are all the kids? I don't know. It was just... It's hard eh, to believe yeah. that he could go this whole time without actually thinking. I think he knows, but to not have, like, the pain of dealing with this, like, tragic event, he just... He, tricks him i mean he just does it because it's easier i mean the dead giveaway i mean i haven't been alive as long as he has but clearly he was not always that size and that age you know so he probably had more hair yeah, back in the day you wake up in the morning and all of a sudden you're you know 15 years older looking mm -hmm. than the decade says you should be i think maybe that's a sign but he was obviously ignoring that. <clears throat> He's obviously ignoring that. But I loved his interactions because he totally, I mean, the 70s, equal rights for I women, know. man. I know. And I just looked Kate's face the whole <laughs> time because, you know, they didn't take women seriously. And so her being like this authoritative detective is just like not possible in his head. So Castle's the captain now. <laughs> captain and, Castle. Captain Castle. And the faces she makes when he calls her like cupcake and like I can't believe you're Sweetheart. letting her like boss you around. <laughs> she's just like can't. She's like doing everything in her power not to blow up on this guy. Yes, but he does come with information. He says yes. he knows who killed Vince, mm -hmm. but he wants to see, because Kate kind of slips out of her seventies lingo for a right. minute there he wants to see the body before he talks because he thinks he's being set up yeah um meanwhile back at the station yeah espo and ryan are doing the cutest thing ever i love them I, everyone I, knows that they're my favorite part of the whole they're show amazing. they're watching an old documentary on some badass cops mm -hmm. um from back in the day called snooki watts and ray price which the names alone are priceless i love it gems and these two work for the anti-crime unit and snooki is the cool cop who slides on the hood the of, of the, car. the car and they call their car you know old red and it's red rocket oh red rocket that was what it was <laughs> <It's> even worse <laughs> <laughs> but they're like watching this and it's just they're so cute they're so cute you know <laughs> of course ryan's kind of like dude are you really yeah. into this right now and as was just eating it up he's like, like yes. i love this and i was 
And I actually thought that in the documentary, I thought that was the actors who play Espo and Ryan when I first saw oh, it. I had to rewind. Actually, the guy that plays Ray Price with the longer hair that Ryan eventually dresses up at, he is, um, have you ever gone to a taping of Jimmy Kimmel? No. If you ever go to a taping of Jimmy <laughs> Kimmel, he is the audience He's the producer. hype man? He Well, he's not the hype man, but he's, like, the audience producer. So he, like, brings you in, oh. tells you the rules. But he wants to be an actor. Like, he was in 42. He just did a guest spot on NCIS. I always recognize him because I've been to Jimmy Kimmel's oh. taping so many times. I don't know. Look him up. Go That's find cool. him. That's cool. No, I love these little fun facts. Fun facts. Um... Well, Lainey has some information for yeah. us. Um, the victim was killed by multiple gunshot wounds. Um, there was an exit wound through the abdomen. Um, and when the body was... Uh, this is confusing. I had to rewind. I was yeah. like, wait, how did they get this yeah, they mold, have a mold of a body? Of the whole body, which is how they know that yeah. the bullet wound came out of the abdomen. So when the body was Originally cemented... Originally put in the cement. You know, they pour the cement over, so it created a mold. Mm -hmm. so, so then his body decayed, and it just eventually went to bones, but the mold was still there in the cement, and they made a mold of, ru they poured rubber in there and made, you know. Made a, a whole body. A whole body. And so, boom, they have their body to show Harold, so get in, you know, put some makeup on, put some hair on the the rubber body, the and rubber there you bodies. go. There's Vince. And this, of course, is all Castle's idea. Um, he's like, Lainey, you got to get into it. You got to <laughs> dress up. Lainey definitely delivered. The Foxy Brown <laughs> Halloween costume was amazing. And when Espa sees her, <laughs> he's, he like loses his train of thought. He's he just very distracted by Lainey's um, extra friends. Yeah, let's say um, that. Yeah, mm -hmm. she she looked hot. She looked good. I'm not going to lie. I was I like, Lainey should dress like this every oh, day of her life time. on this show. I love it. Just saying. Um so they bring him in, they bring Harold in yeah. to see the body, and he notices right away that um, there's the coin from Coney Island mm -hmm. that Vince never... He always had He always had him. it with him because it was for for luck, as he yep. says. Um, as they're walking out, um, Beckett notices a suspicious-looking doctor walking down the hallways. Of course she does. She's of that course, good. Yeah, she's that good. And, of course, you know, he opens fire, tries to kill that Harold. That caught me off guard. I was like, whoa, what just happened? But apparently someone hired a hitman to kind of take out Harold. You know, TV shows, especially cop ones, they seem to always at some point have a shooting inside the precinct. And I'm just wondering, how common is that? I don't think it's very common. I don't think it's common because at why all. Because why would you shoot in a place where there's like hundreds, hundreds and of hundreds cops. of cops? It just doesn't make any sense. I don't know. Because then, you know, um, Harold, Castle takes Harold home. Mm -hmm. Harold's complaining the whole time, like, what kind of precinct are you, yeah. run, precinct are you running down there? Like, so I, I almost lost my wife. But then he says, I'll give you my confession, but we have to go back down to the station to because the station. I feel safer with a bunch of cops around than I do here. I was like, but you were just shot you at. You were shot at where all the cops where all the are. Cops are. I don't know. So Harold, again, not making too much sense. This but, like long-term depression grieving thing is just messing with his head. Yeah, so now they're stuck with, you know, oh, well, our tech friend, what's her name again? Tori. Tori, Tori slash geek girl. That's how she is in my Yeah, name. geek girl. Um, she traces um, the, the shooters. Doctor steps yeah. and finds him on the street where he takes his mask down so they know what he looks like but Doesn't no one match. really knows who he is they kind of ask the families and they don't recognize him yeah so we're kind of left At out to drive yeah, with that a little stopping At, point on that lead on that lead for now but harold wants to confess so now castle has to pitch back at the idea of transforming the entire station into a 70s cop and you knew Please. she was going to give in. So apparently Captain Gates was somewhere. She was not on a, there. at a conference oh, for, for anti-terrorism. And so Beckett, being the ranking officer, was in charge. So he has to convince her to let him transform the whole precinct in, back into the 70s. So that's like taking all the computers away, attire, like just everything. everything. So Harold thinks it is not in the 70s. And so he calls in. His mother Aww. to help. Because at the beginning of the episode, yeah. she uh, she takes a little bit of the wedding planning in her own hands and takes it a little too far. And uh, to help, you know, 
ease the pain of, you know, letting letting her, her down. down on planning an aspect of the wedding. They say, you can do this. You can make this happen. You're so good at plays and theaters. This is just going to be a huge production of a 70s show. And she takes it to the extreme. Of course. And what I found funny about Castle in this episode, you know, for him to say, Mom, this is too much. Yeah. It's like, whoa, you must really be doing too much because Castle is known for his theatrics yeah. and going over the top with everything. So I thought it was kind of funny and also kind of hypocritical yeah. of Castle. It to was be like, Mom, I mean, no with the flowers. Yeah. But I thought she did a great job with the 70s thing. She brought in actors. Scripts. scripts. I, like, I laugh so many times <laughs> during this scene because when they're reading the scripts and like, it, it must have said like, slam fist and cat. <laughs> Beckett was like forgot and there's like a pause and then she goes like this like she, it was just there's so many good aspects to this scene I actually want to go back and watch that scene again it was just funny. because there's so many little conversations happening and little you know backwards conversation you know Alexis is there yep. dressed as a prostitute <laughs> or like a runaway child I love that. she's like wearing a halter top and she's like what they were popular in the 70s yeah and Castle's like, I mean, just cover up a little bit. Yeah. Um, so I thought that whole scene was fun. But when Harold gets in there and we see that Espo and Ryan have dressed up as Snooky and Ray, um, he wants the them to ever. take his statement instead of Beckett and Castle, yeah. which seems to be okay. Yeah. Except that they didn't do all their research because they kind of thought they were just going to walk through. Yeah. So there were a couple times in there where... It was looking sketchy. Her yeah, Harold's like, so what happened when you caught that dude or this dude? And they're like, um, I, you know, they're kind of like, don't know what to say. And then Ryan just goes like full character. So he wasn't really into it as much as Espo was. But then he goes like full character Ray Price and d like delivers this huge like rant. And he's like, but we want to hear your story. And I love that because you, everyone assumes that. Espo would have been the one to yeah. really get into it and know his stuff and be able to pull something out of his butt to, right. you know, convince Harold that they are the real deal. And I love that it was Ryan because was sometimes amazing. he's such a stick in the mud yeah. that it's nice to see him kind of let loose a little let bit. Let loose a little bit. Yeah. But, you know, it's also Espo's fault because he forgot to silence his cell phone. Cell phone. So the cell phone starts ringing right as Harold's about to give them the information yeah. that they need. And I'm just like, wait, are you really forgetting? So, like, the cell phone rings and he kind of goes blank because he's like, what is that noise? Mm. And I'm like, do you, is this really happening or are you just, like, playing this part? Yeah. I, I, and I don't know. But he doesn't tell them anything because he, he loses his train of thought because what is a cell phone? Yeah. Um, all he kept saying was that it had something to do with Glitterati, which was a nightclub in the 70s, mm -hmm. which just conveniently still happens to be still. open and it's been through a couple of transformations. But, but you know what's what? the luck? It's a disco nightclub. It's a night disco club. club now. So Who what are the odds? I mean, perfect. I mean, perfection. Perfect. But before they can actually get away to Glitterati, um, Captain, Captain Gates. Gates walks back in. And I I waited the entire episode. I was like, of course she's going to walk in in the middle of yeah. like the craziest moment right now. It was great. It was great. So, of course, she's like, what's going yeah. on? I... I leave town. You guys are what this are a high profile case. My, yeah. What are you doing letting Castle actually have a say in anything <laughs> while I'm gone? Let him have free reign is never a good idea. Yeah. So, I mean, Beckett and Castle have to kind of talk her down. Be like, well, you know, he has this thing. Yeah. And then she's like, oh, well, I want to talk to Espo and Ryan. They're like, oh, they actually took him to the disco. So, so you can't. And so, they're still in their 70s attire. Yes. Well... Luckily for them, though, um, the guy from the shooting was picked up mm -hmm. at a New Jersey toll um, because, you know, his picture had been sent out. Yeah, so, solo. Yeah, so they caught him. They bring him in for questioning. Um, he doesn't want to talk. They found they the gun in his car door panel. Yeah, the That's bullets are going to match. match. So he's starting to realize, like, ooh, I might not be able to get away with this. Because he's been connected to, like, six other shootings and assassinations, but he's never been, like, convicted. So he's starting to realize, ooh, they might get me. They might get him. And Castle happens to be flipping through his cell phone, looking at pictures, mm -hmm. finds photos of Vince in his baby blue, blue suit. Yep. 
at Glitterati on multiple occasions. So clearly this is the suit he wears when He he wears goes. the blue suit. Which I think is so funny because... The He's a... 70s were just such a different time. It's like, yeah, you have that one suit. Okay, this is my glitterati suit. Yeah, so. and he's a mob boss, so he's, like, dressing nice, you Yeah. know? Like, he he should have, like, multiple disco suits. Yeah, you shouldn't But, have to wear I mean, the same outfit every week. the blue suit was his favorite. The blue suit was his thing. So they know that um, Vince was definitely at At glitterati. Glitterati. They think that it's Frank Russo who killed him. Mm -hmm. So they have to call Espo and Ryan and be like, hey, where is... Harold right now. They're like, oh, he just went away. They're like, it's Frank. You got to stop him. Yeah. We find Harold has disarmed the security I know. guard. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> Harold had it in him. Harold grabs a bottle of champagne and whacks this guy, Yeah. grabs his gun before he even hits the floor and He's has it good. pulled on Frank. Like, that's legit Yeah. mob boss assness. He was the number two. He has skills. He did have skills. And he's he thinks that Frank Russo killed Vin, so he just says, why? You know, like, admit to it. I know you did it. And that's when Ryan and Espo come in, and they're like, drop the gun. You know, we'll take care of this. And uh, they just bring them both back to the precinct. Yeah, and this is where it all gets uncovered. We finally learn what happened Mm-hmm. to poor Vince. Um, Harold says that he was supposed to meet up with Vince Yeah. after, later that night. Vince had said, I want to meet up with you. I have something important to tell you. He never showed up. So that's when Harold started driving around, looking for him, went to all the normal spots, Yep. even went to Glitterati. And there's a sign on the door that said, close for private event. Yep. And then when Harold... When sorry, when Vince never showed up and was missing, he knew that it had something to do with Frank because, Yep. you know, he thought he was in there murdering him. So then go over to Frank Russo's room when he's getting in interrogated, and he says, which is kind of a shocker, that the private event was booked by Vince, but he didn't kill him, and he thought it would be it was something romantic because Last Dance, which was supposedly a very romantic song back in the '70s, was playing. So he thought, you know, something, you know, romantic was going to be happening. And he says that he was going to marry Michael Carcano, Car Carcano. Car Carcano's sister. Oh, we forgot to talk about the Carcanos. Yeah, well, the Carcanos own the, the cement that, that, Because apparently in the yeah. 70s, the mob all owned different cement companies Yeah. and our cement portions and the cement that That Vince was in. Vince was in was owned by the Carconas, which was a big rival family. Right. And so Vince was supposed to marry his sister because it was a merging of the families. Like, it had to be a hush-hush because if everyone, if the other families knew that they were going to merge, it would have created, a, you know, like all this kind of like Hoopla. a war. Yeah, Yeah. hoopla. So he was marrying his sister, and then they asked, well, who is his sister? And it ends up being Frank Russo's wife. Which, what? I had no idea. I had no idea. I knew she was, I knew she I mean, was I didn't like cool. her. Yeah, I was like, I didn't like her, but I also loved the character Yeah, she was. of her. She definitely stuck out in my head. I remembered her for that For sure. small tidbit that we got of her. Yeah. So, But I did not see that one coming. But it turns out Vince was supposed to propose Propose. to her that night and do something romantic. But he couldn't actually go through with it. And as he was walking out, she shot him in the back and then shot him again. And then Mm her -hmm. brother covered Covered it it up up because he didn't want to start a war because, you know, they killed the head of the family. And 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 Harold and Vince were in in love. love. And and Vince was saying no to the girl so that she could go. He He could could go tell him. tell Harold that. But Harold and Harold knew that. And he had the same coin. That they had from Coney Island, but he told he was the one that actually told Vince that he had to get married because if everyone anyone found out about the two of them, it would kind of ruin him. And he was happy being the number two, but like finding out that Vince couldn't go through with it probably meant a lot to him. It definitely did, and so he had to say goodbye somehow. Yeah, but the thing is, they really couldn't prove that Frank Russo's wife did it until Robert Decker, the hitman, turned on her and said. You know, she hired me, so she obviously wanted to keep it secret. Yeah. So. Which bit her in the butt because no one knew that she was involved. Nope. Harold was just down at that precinct to identify a body. Yeah. Not, he wasn't really not to talk, spilling not to anything else. 
I mean, he also thought so, it was her husband who did it. So, yeah. I mean, she would have been in the clear. Sometimes you just shouldn't Don't, mess with things. I know. Don't poke the bear while it's sleeping. Well, she poked and now she's in jail. And now she's in jail. And they have a great little 70s party to kind of say goodbye because we also learned that Harold, as soon as he got shot at in mm -hmm. the precinct, it kind of woke him up from Jump his... started his... Uh, his days. Yeah. So he was kind of playing them this whole time yeah. to get close to Frank because that's who he thought killed him. So ultimately they go and have a dis disco party to kind of say let go of the 70s yeah, and say, say goodbye. goodbye and... It was a cute scene. It was a cute it scene. It was a little weird that Captain Gates was there. I love that Gates and Harold were both on the dance floor at the end, like, dancing by themselves, just it's living very convenient life. convenient that Martha's there and Alex is there and everyone's there. Tori was there dancing yeah. with Lainey. I was like, wow, this is like a little reunion. Ooh, and did you see the way Espo was going over to Lainey? I mean, she just get again. back together. Just, just do it already, Ugh, guys. It makes me mad. I mean. They love each other so much. They do. They should just get up there with Castle and Beckett and make it a hey, double wedding. Maybe. Just Maybe. saying. Ooh, that could be a good prediction. Prediction. Um, but yeah, so basically that was the. Up oh, yeah, let's just get into predictions. Let's do it. You're after Buzz TV. Good is that, job, Steve. Is that not what you said? Yeah. Oh, okay. We did. <laughs> it was perfect. <laughs> it was perfect, Steven. Um, so what are your predictions? My prediction. I mean, it's same thing every week, but this time I hope it's true because there was not a lot of wedding stuff in there this wasn't. episode. There was like a tiny, tiny piece in the beginning. Um, so we only have two more episodes left. So I think that this wedding planning, if, the, I mean, maybe they're going to push the wedding to next season. Oh my gosh, don't do that. But if there's going to be a wedding in the finale, there needs to be some decisions. There. I need like bridesmaids dresses with Alexis. I need flowers. I need venue. I mean, have the, I don't even know if they've sent out invitations, so I don't know how this wedding's going to come about. <laughs> Knowing them, they have it, and it'll be like a spur of the moment. It's going to be like a text message, like, yeah. show up here at this time, <laughs> yeah. but we'll see. So the teaser for next week kind of teases that, you know, someone tries to take out Castle. Mm -hmm. The show's called Castle. We know he's not going to die. No. So stop trying to tease us with that. You know, but I'll still be on the edge of my seat being like, oh my god, how does like, he get out of this? Like, oh my god, is he going to get shot? Is this going to delay the wedding? <laughs> I don't know. It's going to delay the wedding. No, they can't push the wedding over to next season because honestly, think. who, I mean, it's just too much. You can't drag it out I this know. long and then to, I mean, it's the whole season oh, you know gonna has been this wedding. They're just going to elope because nothing's happening and they're going to like, he's going to almost die and they're going to realize life is too short and they're just going to go get married. They're going to get married at the hospital bed. Sure. Okay. Sure. Well, guys, <laughs> make sure you let us know what you think. Um, you can... If you're watching our podcast on YouTube, make sure you leave a comment below. Um, tell us what you think um, is going to happen for the next two yeah, episodes. Definitely. The finale is also almost here. If you're on YouTube, make sure you go over to iTunes and rate and subscribe to our podcast there. Give us five stars. Tell us what you like and what you don't like. And then give us five more stars just because always we're us. Yes. Yeah, always five stars. Um, so in the meantime, make sure you tweet us on social media. Kate, where, they, where can you they can find, find you? You can find me on Twitter at Kate Aquilano. What about you? You can find me on Twitter at the Tiana Hobson, and you can find AfterBuzz TV at AfterBuzz TV. We do over 70 shows a week here, so there's bound to be something else that you like, and make sure you tell a friend about us. Because of course. That's all that we ask of you. And until next week, we will see you guys later. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, see you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.